person can live without food for weeks and without water for a few days but a person cannot survive without the breath for 5 to 7 minutes so what is your knowledge about breathing you have been breathing ever since you are born sorry before that ever since you are conceived through your mother you are breathing and you will breathe till you till the last breath but then we know so little about breathing then what is the use of all my qualifications and my designations and titles my money in the bank but when i have not understood the very purpose of what i am doing i am breathing in breathing out right so you ask yourself whether you are doing the belly breathing is your belly compressing and compressing out so when your belly goes in what happens it squeezes the lungs so the toxic gas carbon dioxide which is at the pit is the heavy gas which is the pit of the lung has to come out so if your stomach is not at all involved in your breathing then you are shallow breathing that's why i told you put your finger in front of your nose and you'll notice you can't even feel your breath that means you are using only less than 20 percent of your lung capacity so when that means your body needs 100 percent but you are only using 20 percent so if body says uh, you know uh, 20 percent is about oxygen about 77 percent is nitrogen about two percent is carbon dioxide which is heavy gas below and then of course methane and helium and all other toxic gases are the balance but if you are breathing itself with only 20 percent of your lung capacity so that means what is your oxygen content you are breathing 20 percent of 20 percent my dear friend please do a quick calculation and you will find that you are cheating yourself by only giving 4% oxygen to your entire body from head to foot. Your body has to survive only on 4%. Provided there is, you know, you are in a very cool, beautiful place. But if you are in a toxic place with a lot of carbon emissions, right? Because of pollution that happens all around us, then what happens? So belly breathing is necessary so that we, when the belly presses inside, you breathe out carbon dioxide. And when the carbon dioxide is gone out and the belly sinks in and belly expands, it creates a suction. It creates a suction to take in more air. So that is what when we say deep long breathing, it is belly breathing. Yeah? Push the belly in, push the belly out, push the belly in, push the belly out, push the belly in, push the belly out. Diaphragmatic breathing, another name for that. Yeah. Scientists have studied nature in great detail. They noticed that animals with a slow breath, uh, slow breath rate, such as pythons, elephants, and tortoises, have a long span of life. They live longer, right? Um, uh, probably a tortoise can live from 400 to 600 years. 400 to 600 years, because one breath takes more than five minutes. But you look at this, look at the dog, how fast it is breathing. You know the span of life, six years, eight years, 10 years, 12 years, fast breathing rate. Birds, dogs, rabbits, they live only for a few years. So this itself will give you a clue from the nature, whether you want to do a deep breathing or you want to do a shallow breathing, right? And that's where it's important for us to look at that. So oxygen burns up. Why is oxygen so vital? Right? Because oxygen burns up waste products, toxins in your body, as well as recharges the body's arteries. Oxygen is the most vital nutrient for your body. It's the best food. So the more oxygen you pump into your body, uh, the more healthier you are, the more immune you are, the more powerful you are, the more stronger you are. It is essential for the cellular activity of every organ of the body, including the brain, the nerves, the glands, and the internal organs, so many internal organs, from the liver to the kidneys to the pancreas to the spleen. Yeah? If the brain does not get proper supply of oxygen, 
it will result in the degradation of all vital organs in the body and that's the challenge that you need to very very closely look at it so the brain requires more oxygen than any other organ almost 80 percent of the oxygen that you breathe the brain takes away if it doesn't get enough the result is mental sluggishness negative thoughts and depression vision problems and hearing decline right so that's why your brain is an oxygen guzzler so if you are not stretching if you're not exercising if you're not moving out right if you're not heavily breathing you go for swimming you breathe you walk you climb the stairs you're breathing in heavy and that's why it is very very important at the same time old people and those whose arteries are clogged often become confused and vague because oxygen to the brain is reduced they get irritated very quickly right and you look at poor oxygen supply affects all parts of the body when the blood flow to the heart is blocked the heart is deprived of oxygen resulting in heart attack they call it ischemic heart disease ischemia means lack of oxygen or oh, it plays dirty yeah that's why you need oxygen so ischemic stroke look at the figure occurs when oxygen rich blood flow to the brain is restricted by a blood clot or other blockages blood clot in the middle of the cerebral artery you see and there's one more here blockage in the internal carotid artery if this occurs to the brain the result is a stroke now you look at this people who have sedentary jobs or oxygen starved they easily become obese because they are sitting in the same place from morning to evening. They feel tired, they feel nervous and irritable and are not very productive. And on top of that, they sleep badly at night, so they get a bad start to the next day, continuing this cycle. And this situation also lowers their immune system, making them susceptible to catching colds flu and other bugs, including the coronavirus. So what's wrong with the way we breathe? Our breathing is too shallow, like I said earlier, and too quick. We are not taking in sufficient oxygen and we are not eliminating sufficient carbon dioxide. See, both are important. You need to take oxygen, you also need to eliminate carbon dioxide because you don't need carbon dioxide, it's a toxic gas and it is lying in your lung deep inside because it's heavier. In normal shallow breathing, will not throw the carbon dioxide outside. Yeah? That is why you yawn. Basically, body system, autonomous system kicks in to throw the carbon dioxide outside. Because you're not doing anything, body supports you sometimes, but not all the time. As a result, our body is oxygen starved and the toxic buildup of this. So that's why you, know, you need to use the diaphragmatic breathing, move in, move out, you look at the direction on your screen, the diaphragm moving in, so it squeezes the lungs, exhalation happens, when the diaphragm moves down, right, the inhalation takes place automatically. Shallow breathing does not exercise the lungs enough. They lose some other function, causing further reduction in your vitality, and that's where we start losing our immunity or the immune strength. So inhalation, exhalation, you look at that. Oxygen intake, carbon dioxide exhalation. Now that's what should happen. Diaphragm pulls downward, helping the lungs expand with oxygen. Diaphragm returns upward, forcing lungs to expel carbon dioxide. That's why we say you need the belly breathing. The raising and lowering of the thoracic cage by intercostal muscles and from diaphragm assist the process of inspiration and expiration. Inspiration is nothing but air from the atmospheric air gets into the lungs to reach the alveoli. You see the small air sacs and exchange of gas in the alveoli. The blood vessels take up oxygen and give up carbon dioxide. Expiration is carbon dioxide collected from the tissues or forced out of the lungs via the nasal apertures and that's where the exhalation is. So you want to look at a breathing exercise. It's a very simple, it's a four step process, but you look at this, inhale, so how should you inhale? You should inhale slowly, which means what do you do? You probably take a flower or you take a nice aromatic drink and then you take a deep breath basically, yeah? 
same time then how do you exhale exhalation must always be faster you want to blow a candle yeah so that's where the whole dimension is you know that's a good uh, way to look at it so four process is inhalation exhalation retention of breath after inhalation that means you inhale hold you exhale hold retention of breath after exhalation so that's the four step process so you can see uh, there's a small chart here to refer four seven eight breathing it's called relaxing or energizing so when you say inhale four you hold one you exhale eight and then you hold four it's relaxing four one twelve one is also relaxing six one ten one relaxing six one eight four relaxing now when you do eight inhale one hold eight exhale and one hold it will start balancing six two six two is balancing six four six one is energizing the means you notice the more you inhale and hold the air your energy starts seven 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 zero absolute energy so that will tell you why is it important for us to practice our ability to inhale and hold hold learn to hold the air inside either full or empty so that's a good thing that you can actually explore breathing importance of breath retention right look at the uh, image oxygenated blood to the heart the oxygenated blood from the heart right you have the entire dimension right so the breathing always breathe through your nose and not the mouth unless specifically instructed otherwise right best time to practice breathing exercises are before when the stomach is empty before breakfast before lunch and then of course before dinner yeah when one inhales and holds the breath he allows enough time for the hp present in the blood um to combine with the oxygen in the alveoli which enriches and energizes the whole body yeah it's very very important benefits of long breaths increases breathing capacity increases your energy level you get clear sinuses improves focus concentration mental clarity reduces stress and anxiety boosts your immune system you understand how to boost your um uh, immunity long deep breaths and it slows the aging process so you become younger right because your body is fitter 